Good morning and welcome to worship with Murray Hills Christian Church. We are so glad that you found us here this morning. Before we begin, I invite you to go get some elements for communion, um, some bread, some juice, a bagel, a donut, some coffee, whatever feels like communion for you this morning. Um, I also invite you to light a candle as a part of prayer in our worship. And if you want to have your Bible open so that you can read along with the scripture today, that would be great as well. Ellie, will you Michelle. begin our worship with song? Will it feel gayer for your morning? Cheryl, take it away. together in this place to worship and praise you. Your redeeming love is the energy, the power that binds everything together in perfect harmony. Jesus Christ, you were born into human life. You know our pain and our joy, and you are the promise of new life within us. You have shown us what it means to be a servant. Build our strength today to faithfully follow in your footsteps. You call us to clothe ourselves with love, with your compassion and your kindness. You call, call us to clothe ourselves with love for the sake of a hurting and heartbroken world. You call us to know and share your grace. Holy Spirit, we ask that you come into our worship today. Come into our lives always. Bring God's hope with you. Bring God's joy with you. Bring God's peace with you. We pray all this in the name of Jesus, our Savior. Amen. We pray now together the Lord's Prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And let lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The God of compassion calls us to be one church. May, may we be one in our faith and our hope and one in our loving service. May we be one in our worship and in our daily living. We take a moment during our worship to reflect on every aspect of our lives, every resource that we have been given, so that we might give and fully participate in the work of God's kingdom here on earth.
pray. God of compassion, teach us your ways and your truth. Teach us the ways of peace, the ways of hope, the ways of healing, and the ways of serving. May our offerings be part of your work for your justice, your compassion in the world. May they bring light and beauty. May they bring hope and joy to a hurting and broken world. Amen. Amen. Jesus calls us to put on the cloak of loving kindness. He calls us to live as people who believe that God, in God's redeeming and saving love. And Jesus calls us to the table. He gives us the bread of life, and it is his life, blessed and broken for the sake of the world. Jesus offers us a cup of blessing, and it is filled to overflowing with love for all people. And all are invited, and all are welcome at this table. And so we remember that final night with all of his disciples gathered around him when Jesus took the bread. He blessed it, he broke it, and he gave it to each one of them saying, take, eat, this is my body broken for you. And then he took the cup and he blessed it and he gave it to them saying, this is my blood forming a new covenant in love. Take, drink. Let us pray. God, we gather around this table in every place and in every way. May we feel your blessing. God, here at this table, our differences don't matter. Here at this table, what matters is our unity through you. As we eat this bread and drink this cup, may we feel your grace pour into us. Here at this table, may our lives be awakened and changed by your calling. In the name of Christ, amen. Oh, 
in there singing. What a marvelous piece that was. From my late teens into my early 20s, I had a favorite coat that I'd wear all winter long. It doesn't last as long in Sacramento as it does up here, but I'd wear it all winter long. It was a dark red wool lined with brown satin and leather buttons. It was cozy and warm, and for a couple of years, it was at the height of fashion. But even when the fashion changed, I just kept wearing it. It felt like I was wrapping myself up in a warm, favorite blanket. Over the years, the lining inside got pretty torn up, tattered and torn, but I'd just patch it up and mend it. Over time, I noticed that that coat of mine I wore so long that it was beginning to look like I was wearing it, even when it was just hanging there in the closet, it still kind of had my general shape about it and my arms were kind of bent just so. And long after I stopped wearing it, it hung in the back of my closet. I guess I held on to it because it had been my favorite, but I think it was also a reminder of that younger woman I used to be, a person of faith shaped by my culture, my upbringing and my faith, my education and my life experiences, the person I used to be before I took off that old coat and put on something new. 
Beginning last week and continuing over the summer, our sermon series will be focusing on the testimony of the Apostle Paul. Pastor Karen and I will be guided in part by a book entitled The Call, The Life and Message of the Apostle Paul by UMC Minister Adam Hamilton. Hamilton describes Paul as a man shaped by his culture, his upbringing, his faith, his education, and his experiences. Paul's understanding of the gospel was molded by his own crises of faith and by his encounters with the risen Christ and with the Spirit. We may find out that as we study Paul's letters that we're going to begin to see his own faith journey as both reflecting our own lives and guiding us forward as we seek to answer God's call to follow. Hamilton said in his book that he has in there a kind of a neat summation of the difference between the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John and the letters of Paul, which take up most of the New Testament. The Gospel accounts, this is by Hamilton, describe the events and teachings of Jesus, each written from a unique perspective. On the other hand, Paul's own perspective is revealed in his letters to the churches he founded as he seeks to interpret the significance of Jesus' life and message for specific churches in a specific circumstance in the times they were in, in times of challenge and turmoil. Hamilton goes on to remind us that Paul's particular focus is on trying to understand the meaning of Jesus' death and resurrection. Paul's letters are not just some kind of thoughtful musings on faith, and religion, they have practical implications, and they reflect the life-forming, life-changing, life-giving imperative that Paul discovered when Jesus had rolled him to his knees on the road to Damascus. Paul's encounter with the risen Christ forced him to reevaluate everything in his life and then drove him forward on his missionary journeys. When we study Paul's letters to the church, we learn of his courage and determination. Sure, but we also see Paul as imperfect as any of us, just trying to figure out what faith means to him. He's insecure at times and angry at others and petty at others and hard to follow a lot of the time. But we also see his striving intensity to understand and to share God's call to follow. Now Paul writes to the church at Philippi. Now there is just this one thing I do. I forget what lies behind. I shrug it off. I just leave it there behind me and I strain forward to what lies ahead. I press onward and I reach toward the goal for the prize of the heavenly call to follow the call of God in Jesus Christ. I read now from Philippians chapter 2, verses 1 through 13. If there is any encouragement in Christ, any consolation from love, any sharing in the Spirit, any compassion and sympathy, make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form. He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my beloved, just as you have always obeyed me, not only in my presence, but much more now in my absence, work out your own salvation with 
fear and trembling. For it is God who is at work in you, enabling you both to will and to work for God's good pleasure. In Jesus, Paul tells us, God comes to us as one who serves, and Jesus calls us to follow him. Professor Susan Eastman of the Duke Divinity School describes this Christ hymn that takes up the major portion of what I just read to you as full of movement and energy. And she said it demonstrates God's movement from separateness to solidarity with humankind as Christ moves into the most despairing depths of human existence. As Jesus empties himself of his divine power, Eastman says, this is literally the kindness of God as God becomes one of our kind. God comes very near to us, so near that God literally gets under our skin. This is the source, she says, of the life-transforming power, the energy of God, that striving intensity that animates Paul's ethical teaching. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God that is in work that's at, at work in you, enabling you to both will and to work for God's good pleasure. In Jesus, God comes to us as one who serves and, and calls us to serve. Not in some triumphal chorus of we've got ours and too bad for you, but as people who know what it means to serve others as they have been served. Professor Eastman says it this way, the salvation we are to work out, not some kind of private individual destiny, but rather a quality of life that we enter into in Christ. Paul describes this call to follow this quality of life as one of self-giving love and mutual affection shared with all people. It's a quality of life that is shared in the spirit, the spirit that gives us the courage and determination to be the people that God has called us to be. Work out your own salvation, Paul says, with fear and trembling. For it is God who is at work in you, enabling you to both will and to work for God's good pleasure. I read now from Colossians, Paul's letter to the Colossians, chapter 3, verses 12 to 17. As God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourself with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, patience. Bear with one another, and if anyone has a complaint against another, forgive each other, just as God has forgiven you, so you must also forgive. Above all, clothe yourself with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called to the one body. And be thankful. And whatever you do in word or deed, do you do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. This is the word of God for the people of God. Now I'm pretty sure that Paul never listened to the country gospel. I think we sang a little bit of it earlier in the service when we were singing that Bader hymn. And I'm pretty sure that at least some of you might go along with Paul on this. But the song called Two Coats by Ralph Stanley surely sounded to me like he had an idea of what Paul had in mind in the scripture we heard today. The first few lyrics go like this. Two coats were before me, an old and a new. I asked my sweet master, what must I do? The old coat was ugly, it was tattered and torn. I took the other, a new one, had never been worn. I'll tell you the best thing I ever did do. I took off that old coat and put on the new. Paul writes a letter to the church at Colossae. Even though this letter was written early in the first century, They've been there for a while, and they've been there long enough so that the people who made up that congregation were starting to get off track, or maybe we just say a little bit off message. The people of the church had been arguing over pretty much everything, all kinds of things. 
They had disagreements about what they needed to do or change or not change in their congregational life together. And then they had disagreements about what they were gonna do and what they were called to do in the world that lay just outside their doors. They needed Paul's reminder that it is God that is at work in you, enabling you to both will and work for God's great pleasure. These folks, way back in the first century, not long after the death and resurrection of Christ, were already finding it just as hard as any church anywhere even today to live as people called by love into the one body of Christ, to live as people called to confess and live their hope in Christ. Especially now in the tumultuous times we live in, with the fear of coronavirus rising, with confidence in our political leaders falling, when people seek ways to divide us instead of bringing us together, when all around us people clamor for justice, demanding their God-given right to equality, we are called by Christ to stand with them. We are called by Christ to stand with them. And as we take our own stand against systemic racism and brutal systems that keep people from claiming their own quality of life, we are called by Christ to declare with our words and our actions the hope that is within us for all people. We're called to take off those old coats and put on something new. Bruce Barkhauer is a minister of faith and giving for the disciples of Christ in their general church. In an essay on faith, hope, and love, he asks these questions. He says, what kind of shape does my life take on when I'm called to take on the likeness of Christ? What happens within my own character and being? And how do I account for the hope that is in me? He goes on to say that the call to follow Jesus is an invitation to a journey. And that's the same journey that call and call that Paul answered. We are called to follow and we are called to seek guidance in scripture. Not just so that we can feel hope and hold it to ourselves, but also that we can proclaim it, that we can bear witness to the injustice we see around us, to the pain and suffering we see around us, to the hopeless, helpless ones we see around us. Through our words and our actions, we can bear witness to the hope that is within us. The first man was earthly, Paul Stanley said, and made from the ground. We all bore his image the whole world around. The next was my savior. From heaven so fair, he brought me this new coat. You now see me wear. I'll tell you the best thing I ever did do. Took off that old coat, put on the new. Paul writes to the Colossians, that old coat you're wearing, it's tattered, it's torn. It's torn up by resentment and anger. Take off that old coat. Take off that bitterness. Take off that fear and hatred. Just leave it all behind you. Take that old worn out coat you've been holding on to and just leave it behind. You don't need it. It's weighing you down. It's making your journey harder than it needs to be. It's holding you back from a life lived in faith, from a life lived together in love, from a life that suits God's purposes, not yours. Paul says, here you go. I've got a new coat for you to wear. Try this one on instead. Put on some compassion. Try a little kindness. Try on some humility. See how good it feels when you wrap it around yourself. Look in the mirror and see what it means to be continually made new. You've got some new clothes to wear. You'll see that once you're wearing those new clothes, you're called together by love into the one body of Christ. You'll see how, learn how, know how, nothing can keep you apart from Christ and nothing can keep you apart from anyone else. You can declare the hope you carry in all the ways you can, to all the people you can. 
Paul says that once you put on those new clothes of the Spirit, you'll see how the world looks different to you. Once you put on these new clothes, you'll see how the world is different for you. You'll feel how forgiveness flows through you, how love flows through you and out to others and then back to you. When you put on that new coat, you'll see how differently God planned this world. The Message Bible says it like this, you've been chosen by God, called in to follow, called in to follow and then to go out to others. You've been chosen by God for a new life, a new life of love. So go ahead, wear that new coat that God picked out for you. Compassion, kindness, humility, strength, discipline. Forgive others as God has forgiven you and regardless of what else you put on, wear love. It's your basic all-purpose garment. Never leave home without it. Now this new coat, it suits me, it keeps me so warm. It's good in the winter and it's good in a storm. My Savior has dressed me in a garment so rare. He brought me this new coat. You now see me wear. And I'll tell you the best thing I ever did do, I took off that old coat and put on the new. Amen. We come now to the time in our service when we lift up our prayers. We have some candles already lit for private or personal prayers. Um, and if you have a prayer that you would like us to lift up verbally during the service, we invite you to let the church office know um, and we will, we will get it spoken in church during worship and light a candle as well. Pray continued prayers for Dorothy Wilson as she gets stronger and stronger. For Dolores Hainer and her family. For Kimberly Henderson. For Mary Bartlin's family as they mourn the loss of Paula, Mary's sister. For Wilma Cribs. For the leaders of our communities. For the leaders of our country. leaders of the world. For all who are working for God's justice. It may be summertime, but we know that the employees of the school districts around us and throughout the country are figuring out how kids are going to go back to school in the fall. We pray for them for wisdom, for compassion. And I light a candle for whatever prayer you would like to speak aloud where you are right now. join together in prayer. Loving God, we are so thankful that you are in our lives. You are a help in times of difficulty. 
You are a guide when we feel lost and alone, and you are a strength in times when we feel weak. We know that you have the power to transform our lives, to mend our broken relationships, and to bring strength and hope to the brokenhearted. God, we bring our worries and our burdens, our hopes and our dreams to you knowing that you are here and that we know that you are the hope of the world. Today, we hold up in prayer all of those who are worried about their health, those who are worried about what the future might hold. We lift up those who feel anxious, depressed, or afraid. We lift up those who are sick. We lift up those who are holding burdens so heavy that they find impossible to share with others. We lift up those who mourn. We lift up those who fight, who are angry. God, we pray for ourselves and we ask for your guidance and support. May we feel your presence leading us, encouraging us, supporting us, and loving us now and always. Amen. And shall we end today with singing the verse of Amazing Grace? today. Um, it is always good to have you here even when we can't see you. Um, we continue to connect through Zoom meetings throughout the week. They come, information for the links come in an email at the end of the week. If you would like that information and are not on our email list, you can contact our church office and they, um, our administrator can get you set up. We also have times when you can come into the sanctuary and worship and pray, one person or one family at a time. Um, and we also have an opportunity if you would like to walk in prayer, we have our labyrinth set up. So you can contact the church for times to be able to do that. People of God, here's our blessing today from Paul's letter to the Colossians. May the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, for you were called as one people into the one body of Christ. Teach and encourage one another in every way, so that the word of Christ becomes known to you and through you. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of Jesus, who is the name above all names, giving thanks to God through Christ. And may God be with you till we meet again. Amen. Amen.